puddles of blood on his way to work. He is the only one who can whip you, ship you, and save you in the same scripture. The Charles did not. It is by We decided to go with Youth Development packaged as a performance ensemble because we both came from performance backgrounds um, and we were very um, involved in the community working with youth programming, um, specifically around sports programming and we saw a void in the arts. Um, so we decided to go with working with youth to create performance work. Um, but. I think our intention definitely wasn't about the performance work um, originally. It was more about uh, tapping into who we are and making sure that our youth knew that their voice counted and that whatever they were going through, however they showed up, that we were there to be with them, to be a part of their journey, and to work with them to really find and tap into their voice. Um, and we knew performance mediums, and so those are the, what we introduced them to, and so. <laughs> oh, I think, tw so 20 years ago, we were mad young and really just trying to find our own way. Um, so there wasn't a formula or a, a process necessarily, but we did feel rooted in our community we did see the necessity for young folks to, to take on leadership roles and to define for their community and for themselves what healing, what, um, what public spaces should look like, what um, you know, important issues should be addressed, um, what art and culture looked like. So the process really for us was just about you know, getting a crew, um, who we could build with, that would love on us, um, that we could trust, and doing the work. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kumbalinks means um, that youth are able to just really value themselves, you know, really know that everything, um, you know, all of the things that make them up, you know, are important, no matter what they look like, they, if they're ugly, if they're beautiful, whatever they are, they make them who they are, and they need to be respected for that, and they need to be celebrated for that, and so I think for the city, Kumalinx is needed because the spaces, um, for instance, you know, formal education, uh, public education, they don't celebrate our youth. They don't, you know, um, give them the excellence in, in terms of resources that they need to thrive, um, you know. And so uh, Kumbalinks is really just trying to hold a space for, for that to thrive and for that to be and exist. And um, I think it's working because I see our youth who have aged out of programming coming back to programming. Um, I see, you know, a youth that's come into programming and hasn't been vocal, hasn't, you know, been in the forefront of whatever, you know, we're doing um, for a, an extensive time <laughs> and then come out of their shell and be this amazing, I didn't even know you did that, you know, um, in taking leadership. And so those are, those are the ways that I know that it's needed and it, it's proven to me. Well, go ahead. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So Kuma Links engages young folks, you know, eight and up. Um, we really think of ourselves as a continuum, an intergenerational collective of folks. So there's not really a starting or ending point. There are some different ways that we engage folks. We have um, a, a project that's called Half Pint Poetics, mm -hmm. which is really about engaging 
the babies, you know, that are in second through eighth grade um, at an elementary school level. And then the Kumbalinks Performance Ensemble is really geared towards high school youth. But, you know, our babies grew up in that, so I think the youngest member could have been four or five years old at some point. And it doesn't end, it's open, you know, again, we're intergenerational, so the, the folks that are a part of the ensemble, we're a part of the ensemble. Um, but we also have an initiative that's called uh, As I Am. Um, and we just started that recently. Um, we have been intentional about that, focusing on an age group of 18 to 25, 26 year olds. And that's really because we feel like the city of Chicago is neglecting that age group. But the truth is, is that those are young folks who need guidance, who need family. Like the need for love and support and guidance and resources, it never ends. Yeah. We need it for the rest of our lives. And so we're really trying to model a space, you know, a place that that is all inclusive and that it, that recognizes community is is forever. You know, no matter no matter our age, we need to have that okay. that membership. You know? So we um, we're our home base is at Clarendon Park, which is in Uptown on the north side, and the youth that come to that park come from over 27 different neighborhoods in Chicago. Um, but we also have a program in Eaglewood. Um, we meet there for a mobile recording studio, um, and that happens once a week in Eaglewood as well. And then we have um, the Halfline Poetics programs that we have. So we have a couple. Um, we actually used to have one in each area, um, but we, as of last spring, closed down our programming in um, Little Village. Little Village. Yeah. So, and that is really just about one. Um, one of our co-founders, uh, she actually started that program in Little Village, and she's transitioning into different things in her life. But also, it was um, the purpose or the the reason that we didn't replace her um, is because we're really thinking about our programming and like the impact and going deeper with our programming and the capacity that we have um, to make that happen. And so we've gone through a whole strategic plan. Um, it's time to do it again. <laughs> but uh, definitely, you know, there's some real thought and intention about not trying to duplicate and make a lot of things, a lot of programs happening, happen across the city. Um, without the capacity to make them excellent. And that's, that's really our goal. So currently we're looking at our staffing structure um, and going through transition. Um, we've brought on some new staff, so we went from almost 20 years of two people um, to five. And the way we did that also was very intentional, um, looking at the youth that have gone through our program, that do come back, that are um, asking for opportunities in administration. Um, and so with that, we were able to onboard uh, uh, three alumni. So they are taking on operations and um, which is also really important to us in terms of the next 20 years in sustaining this organization, um, allowing us to step into a creative um, position um, and a visionary position for the organization, but allowing the youth that are, you know, have come up in this organization to continue to instill the culture of this organization, to um, be running the business and, um, so it's looking good. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's looking good. So yeah. That's really amazing. Because you set out to do something with you and how you created, like you provided these resources, helped them along the way, and now created this opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, for them to get their start. And yeah. that's what this is all about. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good. It's good to have a, a crew mm -hmm. to rely on. Like the two of us, just because we've grown, obviously. Um, it's, it's good to have some other folks to kind of, you know, feed, eat with, yeah. you know, and build it. And you know that your legacy will continue. Because mm -hmm. now you're, you're bringing in people that will become mm -hmm. what you started. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Hi, 
I'm Jacinda. And I'm Jaquanda. And we're from Kumba Links. We're at Rockstar Studios. And you're watching Urban Matrix TV.